Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today, first off, I hope you guys had a great Easter weekend if you celebrate Easter. I spent a chunk of my weekend on Griefers Podcast, where we talked about all manner of issues going on with the game today, everything from hybrid ships to submarines to uh, the reintroduction, well not the reintroduction, I guess you could say the soft reintroduction of CVs into clan battles with the Louisiana being allowed in for this last week and a half of CVs. If you want to hear that conversation, check out the link down below to Griefers Podcast. It was a great time. I talked more about a carrier con if you're interested in that as well. So again, link to that is in the description down below. But the topic of today's video is five players you will meet playing World of Warships in 2023. I have five stereotypical player profiles to go over here with you guys today. This is of course mostly for fun and to have a moment of levity at the current current state of the game and all that jazz and if you could think of a few more player profiles let me know in the description to end the description in the comment section down below and if you do find yourself enjoying this video please make sure to drop a like and leave a comment before you click off of it it helps out a lot with the youtube side of things so let's go ahead and get going with number five and that is the quitter now, the quitter is a player that is normally in one of two situations. One, they've had a pretty bad run on whatever session they are on for the day. As I'm sure those of you that watch my streams know, it can happen to anybody. We thankfully broke our like two or three week losing streak that we've had on stream for the past three streams or so uh, last night. And they could be very much on something quite similar to that to where they're kind of just done. When they see something that doesn't really go in the positive direction, maybe, you know, one or two of their DDs just eat torps at the beginning of the match. And well, that's not a very good way to start a match. DDs are super important. And it's always this hard when you see half of your DDs are dead in the opening two or three minutes. They could be someone that has had a bad run like that. Maybe they're just kind of fed up with their with the game overall, the direction that the game's going in, and they just rage quit in the middle of the match. Now, I don't mean they go back to port. That can be a quitter, but th what they typically do is, despite their ship class, despite their ship being maybe a DD or a light cruiser, They've just had enough, they sail toward the back of the map, and proceed to just sit there for the rest of the match. Maybe if something wanders into their main battery gun range, or to, into their torpedo range, they might toss some torpedoes towards them, they might fire a salvo or two, but they're not really actively trying to participate in the battle too much. And they might also do things like, well, complain in chat. They might complain about, well, the DD's dying, the battleship's sitting in the back, or the uh, cruiser's not doing what they're supposed to do, while they are also sitting in the back. It's one thing if you're in the front and you're trying to encourage your teammates to move up, but if you yourself are sitting in the back and complaining about other players, uh, yeah. They might also be complaining about other players complaining because, hey, apparently it's just fun to complain. Now, of course, this doesn't really help anybody out, players that do this. Thankfully, these guys are typically pretty rare. Um, typically, what, from what I've seen at least in today's World of Warships, those that are sitting in the back are, they're kind of just too afraid to push up because of the submarines or the CVs or things like that. But a quitter is something that's kind of just a downer on whatever match you are in and something that I would encourage you guys to not be. Uh, no matter what... Just try to do the best that you can in the game. Yes, you, losing half of your DDs in the first four or five minutes is a terrible loss and honestly is a pretty good indication of where the game's probably going to go because these are so darn important. But still, no matter what, fight to the bitter end. Make the best out of the situation, even if your team decides to not to. Going down to number four, we have the Farmer. Now, there is one thing that the Farmer cares about. And that is getting a big damage number at the cost of everything. 
All they care about is getting as big of a number as they can in the upper right hand corner of their screen. If they get under 100,000 damage, they've had an absolutely terrible game. Now this can be for usually one or two reasons. One, they're trying to farm credits, which hey, everyone needs that. Or two, they're trying to inflate their stat. They are someone that cares about stats quite deeply and they need to make sure that they dare not come below their average damage and their favorite farming ship. Now the farmer normally plays something like light cruisers or DDs or maybe certain BBs like the Conqueror, the Thunderer, or in the seat on the um, cruiser side of things, something like a small lens, a Wooster, the newly released Brisbane with the DDs, something like a Harugamo, some type of just DPM monster because they have to farm. It ain't much, but it's an honest living, according to them at least. And they will farm to the detriment of their team. They don't care about that cruiser, that little pesky cruiser with his little 2k HP. They don't care about that. They want to go after the battleship with 80, 90, 100,000 damage that they can have all to themselves. They're, they're, they're running the maximum fire builds. They got all their fire flags on. They've got demolition expert. They got everything that they can possibly build into in order to get their fire chance up as high as possible. They love British ships with HE because the British HE is fantastic and especially Japanese HE too. They'll be playing usually those two nations. And again, they don't care about the little DD with 1 or 2k HP left. No, 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 no. They're going to chase down the, the battleship. Farming down the carrier is an end of the round tradition that they must try to ensure that happens as much as possible. And these guys, well, you can always spot them because they're always chasing down that one battleship that maybe at the end of the match all the way to the end rather than capping and it's not it's not particularly rare to see whole matches get thrown because they don't want to cap even though that does give them a lot of um, XP they want to farm so going on down to number three we have a very new player profile and that is the U-Boat Commander so the U-Boat Commander is one of the few players that have actually been hotly anticipating the introduction of submarines into the game. They've played every single test version of submarines during the development period over the past two to three years. And in fact, they rarely play anything else. Yes, these guys are starting to show up in game, believe it or not. And you know what that means? They're actually good at it. While they're playing, they probably has, have Das Boot running in the background, while several forms about U-boats and the superiority of the Type 21 U-boat, uh, some type of post about that being worked on in the progress while they play the U-2501 in-game as well. And, of course, since they're actually good at submarines and they can actually make a pretty big impact with submarines, they're typically, of course, on the enemy team. And they're the one that you don't know it's even stalking you until the torpedo is about to impact your hull. These guys typically don't even use homing torpedoes. They just use the dummy-fired ones because, well, the homing ones give away their position. But the dummy-fired ones don't. Of course, they can do things like shotgun, but typically most of them stay back at range and somehow still manage to get their torpedoes to impact you with frightening consistency. They were probably a torpedo boat player in another life, or previously were before submarines come out. They love being sneaky, they love being undetected, they love surprising you, and they love their U-boats, and well, they love terrorizing you. They also have the patience of a saint because I don't know if you guys have played U-boats or submarines in general. Um, it's something you can't rush into. So these are guys that I have a lot of respect for because they're patient. They, they've learned the class and stuff. But man, I hate to see them in game unless they're on my team. Alright, going on down to number two, we have the A-10 CV. And no, I don't mean that A-10. That'd be kind of scary if that was on a CV in this game. I mean the CV that goes to A-10. This is a CV player that doesn't know or doesn't care about cycle rate. Cycle rate, for those of you that don't play CVs, is a rate at which you get your planes back after a strike. Believe it or not, the planes don't just disappear and warp back to the carrier, they have to fly back. We just see them because they fly up much higher than they normally 
chill at when they are attacking. So they disappear for us, but they gotta fly back to the CV. And this CV that's over in A10, again, he doesn't know or doesn't care about the fact that his planes might be taking several minutes to get back to him. He just cares about, well, staying alive. Even though they have things like 5 second fires, automatic damage con, and so many icons that pop up when you get detected in a CV that they should very easily be able to stay alive, but nope, just for that added layer of security, they gotta go to their safety square, which is A10 or J10. And they sit back here at quite the detriment to their team because, well, if it takes forever for your planes to get back, it takes much longer for you to get planes into the fight and get planes back in action. So you're doing less spotting, you're doing less damage, and overall, being quite a terrible CV player for your team. Typically, a CV wants to be as close to the action as possible, where they can, of course, still survive. That's why if you look at good CV players, they'll find an island or something to tuck into quite cl close to the action. That way they can have a nice fast cycle rate. But of course, if they do get pushed and they're kind of dead, but hopefully if they're doing a good job and your team's doing a good job, they can dominate a flake quite well. The A-10 CV doesn't really do that. They just care about staying alive. And these are those CV players you have to go hunt down at the end of the match. It takes two or three minutes because, of course, they're all the way in A10, A1, or J10, or J1, and they just prolong the match because, well, they're chilling out there, and God forbid you actually sink them. They just want to, of course, stay alive and perhaps get as much damage in as they can. Typically, again, these CVs aren't the best CVs ever. Uh, so if you see your CV not going to A10 or J1 or A1 or a J10, you know you got a pretty decent CV on your hands in that match, at least for that part. And coming in at number one, probably one of the most prolific player profiles now, is what I like to call the identity crisis. With the release of these new American hybrid battleships, so many players playing these things decide that they are going to go to an island and sit there like a CV. Now you might be thinking, Celo, you just said sitting on an island close into the action is good for a CV. Yes, it is. However, these aren't CVs with guns. These are battleships with flight decks. You still have armor, you still have battleship guns, that should definitely be in the, fly as, in the fight as much as possible. But no, these guys go to an island, usually in the back of the map. Sometimes if they're feeling a little extra spicy, they'll get kind of close. And they'll just sit there. And they'll wait for two minutes. Launch their planes. Drop on an enemy ship. And they sit there for another two minutes. Launch their planes. Drop on an enemy ship. And that's all they do for most of the match. Maybe if they're feeling a little daring, they might get their front guns in the action. Although that's pretty rare. Um, these guys are apparently everywhere right now because I really haven't seen a shortage of them. They are playing the American battleship hybrids completely wrong because yes it is a see it is a battleship with a flight deck. Yes you do have a hangar. Yes the hangar is quite squishy but you can still play it at medium range quite well as long as you mind where you're at and mind your surroundings. I mean, shoot, I, I sat and watched Nebraska that sat on an island and fired one salvo the entire time, but boy, was he ready when his planes came up. These are typically newer players, or maybe battleship players that don't have any CV experience, so they're a little cautious to the whole being a CV thing, and being in the back of the map is uh, quite detrimental to these ships' performance, mainly because of their, well, their AP is slow. If you've played American battleships or American ships, you know that their shells don't have the best flight ballistics, so past 18-ish kilometers, the flight time from the end of your gun barrels to the target is quite large. So it's quite difficult to get these shells to consistently land at longer ranges, but these guys just see, seem so darn determined to just sit there and every two minutes launch their planes, strike a, strike a target, and yeah, that's what they do all game. Then at the end of the match, when hey, you know, maybe the, the strategy of sitting in the back and conserving your HP might pay off, do they rush in and finally use their guns and armor? No, nope, then run away to A10, like the A10 CV player. So, the short message is, it's a battleship with a flight deck, not a CV with guns, to you uh, current battleship players having an identity crisis. So guys, that's my five pl 
players you will meet in World Warships in 2023 video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Again, any additional uh, player profiles you would like to add or any changes you or tweaks you think you can make to some of mine, let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday, a wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.